guys are doing well. Welcome to day 213. 213 consists of Isaiah 64, 65, and 66. This also concludes the book of Isaiah for us. Yay! If you have been reading along with um, the chronological reading plan, no matter who's the origin of it, you know, there's Heart Dive and there's Bible Recap. They're exactly the same. Whichever one you've been following, if that has been the case for you, that means you are more than halfway done with reading through the Bible. And that is awesome. Um, I use the Bible Tracker app, and I think we're like somewhere around 55% or something like that. So just over half. And y'all, to be that consistent in this type of style, because I read through the Bible my own once with jumping around. This time I did a chronological reading plan, as you can see. And I'm just like, Lord, I thank you. Next go round, I might try to consistently read in order. I don't know yet, but this has been fun. And this chronological reading definitely helps you to retain more because all the related or time frame matching data is together or text or whatever. So I've enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it thus far. We're just a little over half, but we got a little under half to go. So <laughs> um, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you and I love you. I give you praise, honor, and glory. You are a good guy. You are awesome and you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this sweet fellowship, Lord. Thank you for our Bibles. Thank you for our stationery. Lord, thank you for just being present. Thank you for being who you are, Lord God. I ask that you continue to enter our hearts and minds. Cleanse us out, Lord God, and help us to remember your holy truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, got my highlight of choice and I got my pen. And I'm ready to begin. This is the Inspire Prayer Bible. So the translation is New Living Translation or the NLT. All right. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. As fire causes wood to burn and water to boil, your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies will learn the reason for your fame. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quake. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a good a God like you, who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. I want to come back and highlight this right here. Um, where we at? Um, where's the, uh, there we go. I don't know why I was looking up so high. But we need to understand this right here, that our righteousness, our holiness is as filthy rags. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short. And if you ever needed something to kind of keep you humble and keep you uh, level-headed, this is it right here. Please understand that we all sin and none of us are perfect. This is why we needed Jesus in the first place, because we cannot do it alone. And we have to humbly know this and continue to hold on to this because we know we heard of the concept holier than thou, like just people who think they're, they're self-righteous, like they just, they have self-proclaimed themselves to be perfect and none of us are. We have to remain humble. All right, verse seven, yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. Your holy cities are destroyed. Zion is a wilderness. Yes, Jerusalem is a desolate ruin. The holy and beautiful temple where our ancestors praised you has been burned down and all the things of beauty are destroyed. After all of this, Lord, must you still refuse to help us? Will you continue to be silent and punish us? All right, so that was 64. So now we're gonna go into 65. And remember what I said about 
um, during this time, uh, it was a big deal when God went silent, when no one heard from him. There was no prophecy. Um, no one spoke on his behalf. There was no messenger, no angel. Like people took it very serious. Like, okay, God, where are you? What are you doing? Why aren't you answering us? Why haven't you listened to us? Why aren't you paying attention to us? That immediately became the mindset of God's people. All right, 65. The Lord says, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. I was ready to be found, but no one was looking for me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. All day long, I opened my arms to a rebellious people, but they follow their own evil paths and their own crooked schemes. All day long, they insult me to my face by worshiping idols in their sacred gardens. They burn incense on pagan altars. At night, they go out among the graves, worshiping the dead. They eat the flesh of pigs and make stews with other forbidden foods. Yet they say to each other, don't come too close or you will defile me. I am holier than you. These people are a stench in my nostrils and a crib smell that never goes away. Look, my decree is written out in front of me. I will not stand silent. I will repay them in full. Yes, I will repay them, both for their own sins and for those of their ancestors, says the Lord. For they also burned incense on the mountains and insulted me on the hills. I will pay them back in full. But I would not destroy them all, says the Lord. For just as good grapes are found among a cluster of bad ones, and someone would say, don't throw them all away. Some of those grapes are good. I would not destroy all Israel, for I still have true servants there. I will preserve a remnant of the people of Israel and of Judah to possess my land. Those I choose will inherit it, and my servants will live there. The plain of Sharon will again be filled with flocks. For my people who have searched for me, and the valley of Anchor will be a place to pasture herds. But because the rest of you have forsaken the Lord and have forgotten his temple, and because you have prepared feasts to honor the God of fate, you have offered mixed wine to the God of destiny. Now I will destiny you for the sword. All of you will bow down before the executioner. For when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen. You deliberately sinned before my very eyes and choose to do what you know I despise. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will starve. My servants will drink but you will be thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be sad and ashamed. My servants will sing for joy, but you will cry of sorrow and despair. Your name will be cursed, will be a curse word among my people, for the sovereign Lord will destroy you and will call his true servants my, by another name. All who invoke a blessing or take an oath will do so by the God of truth, for I will put aside my anger and forget the evil of earlier days. Look, I have created new heavens and a new earth, and no one would even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad, re rejoice forever in my creation. And look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Her people will be a source of joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people. And the sound of weeping and crying will be hard, excuse me, will be heard in it no more. No longer will babies die when only a few days on old. No longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. No longer will people be considered old at 100. Only the curse will die that young. In those days, people will live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of, of their own vineyards. Unlike the past, invaders will not take their houses and confiscate their vineyards. For my people will live as long as trees, and my chosen ones will have time to enjoy their hard-won gains. They will not work in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune. For they are people blessed by the Lord, and their children too will be blessed. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Wow. I'm just... <laughs> this just blew my mind right there. Like... Imagine that, and, and this is what recently happened to me, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a chosen person or nothing like that, so please don't take that, but I had thoughts in my head. I didn't even tell nobody. 
I didn't write on a piece of paper. I didn't put it in a prayer journal. I was just like, Lord, it would be nice to have this. Or it would be good to, I would definitely, I could use this. And do y'all know that God touched one of my subscribers to send me the very things that I never, ever even spoke out loud. And I'm like, God, you are a God who listen and you care. And it just blew my mind because it's like, you know how you just not, you're, you're talking, you're, you're making a request, but not really. Like, you know, that's one thing to get on your knees and bow down and say, Lord, I really need you right now for this, this, and this. But just to have a, like a, just a fly by night thought where you're just sitting there and you're doing your own thing, watching this or something. And you're just like, Lord, I, I sure could use this. And it just happened. Like, oh my goodness. And, and this right here, before you even could speak your needs to God, before you even could mention anything, God would take care of it. That is awesome, y'all. That's the God we serve. Verse 25. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lions will eat hay like a cow, but the snakes will eat dust. In those days, no one will be hurt or destroyed on my holy mountain. I, the Lord, have spoken. All right, so that concludes 65. So now we will go into 66. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that? Could you build me such a resting place? My hands have made both heaven and earth. They and everything in them are mine. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will bless those who have humble, who have humble and contribute hearts, who tremble at my word. But those who choose their own ways, delighting their detestable sins, will not have their offerings accepted. When such people sacrifice a bull, it is no more acceptable than a human sacrifice. When they sacrifice a lamb, it's as though they had sacrificed a dog. When they bring an offering of grain, they might as well offer the blood of a pig. When they burn frankincense, it's as if they had blessed an idol. I will send, send them great trouble, all the things they feared. For when I called, they did not answer. When I spoke, they did not listen. They deliberately sinned before my very eyes and chose to do what they know I despise. Hear this message from the Lord. All you who tremble at his words, your own people hate you and throw you out for being loyal to my name. Let the Lord be honored, they scoff. Be joyful in him, but they will be put to shame. What is all the commotion in the city? What is that terrible noise from the temple? It is the voice of the Lord taking vengeance against his enemies. Before the birth pains even began, Jerusalem gives birth to a son who has who has ever seen anything as strange as this. Who ever heard of such a thing? Has a nation ever been born in a single day? Has a country ever come forth in a mere moment? But by the time Jerusalem's birth plan pains began, her children will be born. Would I ever bring this nation to the point of birth and then not deliver it? Asked the Lord. No, I will never keep this nation from being born, says the Lord. Rejoice with Jerusalem. Be glad with her, all who love her, and all you who mourn for her. Drink deeply of her glory, even as an infant drinks at its mother's comforting breast. This is what the Lord says. I will give Jerusalem a river of peace and prosperity. The wealth of the nations will flow to her. Her children will be nursed at her breast, carried in her arms and held on her lap. I will comfort you there in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her child. When you see these things, your heart will rejoice. You will flourish like the grass. Everyone will see the Lord's hand of blessing on his servant and his anger against his enemies. See, the Lord is coming with fire and his swift chariots roar like a whirlwind. He will bring punishment with the fury of his anger and the flaming fire of his hot rebuke. The Lord will punish the, the world by fire and by his sword. He will judge the earth. And many will be killed by him. Those who consecrate and purify themselves in a the sacred ground and with its idols in the center, feasting on pork and rats and other detestable meats will come to a terrible end, says the Lord. I can see that, see what they are doing and I know what they are thinking. So I will gather all nations and peoples together and they will see my glory. I will perform a sign among them and I will send those who survive to be messengers to the nations, to Tarshish to the Libans and Lydians who are famous as archers, to Tuva and Greece and to all the lands beyond the sea that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. 
there they will declare my glory to the nations. They will bring the remnant of your people back from every nation. They will bring them to my holy mountain in Jerusalem. As an offering to the Lord, they will ride on horses and chariots and wagons and on the mules and camels, says the Lord. And I will appoint some of them to be my priests and Levites. I, the Lord, have spoken. As surely as my new heavens and earth will remain, so will you always be my people with the name that will never disappear, says the Lord. All humanity will come to worship me from week to week and from month to month. And as they go out, they will see the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against me. For the worms that devour them will never die and the fire that burns them will never go out. All who pass by will view them with utter horror. What a way to end a book. We have to honor God and obey him and keep his commands. We have to always keep him first, glorify his name. We should not put anything, any God's idols before him. Um, I would say this, although we know that, like I said, Christ has fulfilled the law and we are not reserved from eating pork and this at the third. We do understand that eating an abundance of it is not the best thing for your health. And I can see why a lot of people are quick to say, hey, no pork. Um, but we also have been commanded to bless it and eat it and that it is good. So it's a personal preference, of course. But I know as I get older, I know it's not the best thing to eat. So I have shone away from it. Um, I used to eat bre uh, bacon with every breakfast meal. I Now I, I don't touch it. And that's not part it's partly because it's not that good for me. But two, I actually lost a taste for it, too. Um, ribs, I've never been a fan of. Um, the, my biggest pork, uh, meat that I don't know if I ever turn it away is pork chops. I grew up on pork chops and I think I couldn't meet one. So, but hopefully I'm not offending anyone. Please don't be offended. I'm just talking about food. But as I get older, I start to look at things a little differently. And when it comes to sodium, pork is probably one of, is definitely the worst meat to consume a lot of. So y'all be careful out there. But anyway. Lord God, I truly thank you for this reading. I thank you for this fellowship. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's following and reading along. Lord God, may you continue to lead and guide us. And Lord, we thank you that we have successfully read through the book of Isaiah. And I ask that you sharpen our minds and our hearts, that we will remember what we have read and apply it to our lives when it's applicable, Lord God. And for any other research and study, Lord God, help us to hold on to it and to remember and share it with others around us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Um, 2.13. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow for uh, 2.14. Well, we will read 2 Kings 20 and 21. So another cool read. Not so bad. All right, y'all. Love you all. God bless. Take care. Bye.